doggy. Oh, 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 I got it. <laughs> it's the Halloween episode. Holy cow. Hey, that'll work you out. Yep. Let me get my All right, boys. There. It is the Halloween episode. I guess you could call it the Halloween episode of the RC Group's video podcast. I don't have anything interesting. I found this in my son's closet. I apologize. Jim looks pretty freaking amazing. Jim, why don't you scoot yourself down a little bit so everybody can see you? I'm riding a boat, y'all. Some you have Larry now. Flint legs. I'm waiting for a few more live viewers. I'm going to go crazy again. I see that. And then we got uh, Jason the Orc over here. Oh, man. Uh, that they is call amazing. me Big Jim. <laughs> so that eyeball is your iPhone, right? Yeah. Well, no, that's his real eyeball. And it is uh, disturbing to say the least. Is this how you all usually look, Jason? Look, put your hand back up. It's your exact skin tone. Wow, yeah, it matches you. Well, it's a little dark. Oh. <laughs> now, Matt, who are you supposed to be? I'm supposed to be a guy that uh, didn't have a costume when you said 10 minutes ago, everybody wear their costume. <laughs> I thought we said this two weeks ago. I don't know. I don't have anything. Like, I'm not. Yeah, I, you were going to be Jeremiah from The Walking Dead, I thought. No. I thought about it, and it didn't go down. So. That sucks. I just right. found this in my son's closet, so it's all I got. For Happy our- Halloween! Woo! All right, Matt, for our live viewers that are on right now, I'm going to do my crazy um, riding the bull concept one more time. Whoa! Right, whoa! 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 <laughs> that thing Hold stays on. inflated like that, huh? Yeah, so I'll show you. Here's the brain of the operation. I'm going to turn the fan off and now. Oh, there she goes. Sit in my chair. Oof, I'm really <laughs> messing the whole studio up here. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Looking All good. All right, everyone. You have reached the RC Group's live hangout. You know, we were gone last week. We were on a trip. It was uh, it was a crazy place we went to. I got to say, that was a lot of tight pants. Um, we Toronto, to, eh? And we, y- y'all have never seen this hat because it's so crazy I never wear it. Is that your... Everybody's uh, talking about my tight pants. I got my tight pants on. It's, it's actually fuzzy. You need to stand in front of your mic, Jimmy. Well, I'm, I, I can't show you my hat up close and stand in front of him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yes, we went up to Toronto as a team. We walked downtown. Let me tell you how many cowboy hats are in that town. Well, one, I guess. Mine. Yeah. You uh, you wore it well, though. The only cowboy hat in town you wore very well. It's about as stylish as I get, by the way. The clothes you saw me wearing up there. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got to get another bandana. I'll be right back. Oh, it's coming off, y'all. It's too hot. Oh, no, don't take your head off. There's the secret. Ah. Oh, no, I'm breaking my outfit. So Ooh. what is going on in that? Look at that. Just holding it like that is kind of freaky. Yeah, it's so funny. Are your iPhone's in there, huh? Yeah. So if you watched the podcast a while back, we were on uh, Amazon <laughs> looking at uh, inappropriate Amazon outfits and uh, – that's where I got my outfit. I immediately ordered it that day as soon as we got off the podcast. I think the funniest thing about all this is that both of you guys are somehow winded and sweaty. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I did it in the backyard. Uh, I, I, I brought my daughter out and I said, let's shoot a video. We did it three times. By the end of it, I was like, I got to go lay down. I mean, try <laughs> hopping around like you're riding a bull for three minutes and a go. It's, that should be a workout. <laughs> Well, it, I, need, uh, I need to see that video, please. Because that's I saw, how, I, it's on Facebook, but I'll find it. I call it Prancer Size. So you didn't get the giant blow up naked fat man? No, no. That was maybe, carrying maybe, you with his anatomical correctness? Maybe when my kids are grown, I'll get something like that. I don't know. Yeah, and we're not doing a podcast, right? <laughs> nope. So, hey, you guys, what have y'all been up to in the world of RC? Wonders our live viewers. 
A lot of stuff, actually. I've got a brand new charger I'm going to take a look at in a little bit. What else do you guys have? Jason, what you got going over there at the Jason uh, Honeycomb Hideout? Mm -hmm. I've got some stuff I can't show yet. Um, it's not ready, but I've been working on the conversion for the Rock Ray. Um, right. I low C Rock Ray. I'm converting it over to the Castle Creations uh, kind of rock crawler censored motor. And it's a little bit of a challenge because the, the shaft on the motors aren't anywhere close to the same size. So I've got to source a pinion gear and try to see if I can make it all fit and work properly. So it's, we'll it's get that figured out. Not as plug and play as you thought it would be. Right. And then I've got the uh, Multiplex sent me the Easy Glider 4. Not uno, not dos, not tres, but cuatro. Uh, so I'm going to play with that thing. That's going to be really fun. And then I'm packing up today. I'm heading to uh, Mr. Mac Hodges. Will you heading tell, to the hobby shop. Will you tell Mac Hodges that uh, Matt and I said hello? I will tell him. Talk about an so RC. We're heading up there for the... Uh, Down there. Uh, over there? Heading down there. Heading over and down there. Over there. Around them over. yonder there. <laughs> Matt, Mac is like one of the, the RC luminaries, much like a Pat Harkness would be, you know? They're yeah. So we normally, uh, well, we've, I guess the punk chunk has been all over the place. It's the DLG competition in the fall, kind of the last one of the year. And norm it, last year it was at the Pecan Batch, which was much closer to me. And it was an awesome place to fly, but there's a little bit of a feud with the neighbors going on and so there's an airspace restriction and that would basically prohibit uh how the dlgs need to fly so they yeah, moved it to a hodges hobby field so related issues right essentially yeah. so the kicker here is i'm keeping out in my hammock again but it's going to be cold y'all it's going to be like 30 something degrees 38 degrees saturday night why are you going to do that? So I'm going to I'm going to try to attempt to put my hammock up between two of the pillars holding up some of the shelter pavilion, and then I'm bringing an extension cord. Bye, Jim. Jim yeah, T. Graham. I got, a, I got a rough signal from you too, Jason. Yeah, I'm, I, it's bad for me for both you guys. Oh a bit. man, it's the internet as a whole. The internet. Maybe it's north. So anyway, I'm going to try to bring an extension cord, have a heater. Uh, that I can plug in and kind of set up next to me to kind of blow inside of my hammock slightly, <laughs> try to stay a little bit warm. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a fun trip. You do? You, do you own a tent, like a, a regular tenting thing? I do, but you couldn't pay me to to take that and put it up and sleep yeah. in that. Not after having a hammock. Yeah. Well, have fun there. So, what's going on? Is it the uh, um, what's going on at Max Place? Is it it's the punk, punk and Chunk DLG uh, competition? Yeah. yeah. That run by Cliff. Uh, I don't know. He's maybe part of it, but yeah, it's East Coast. It's one of the last events of the the year, so mm -hmm. it's gonna be fun. It should be. There he is. He's back in. Man, my bull got out. No, oh. go run it. Sorry, I'll go ahead. <laughs> hey, I show you the stupidest thing I've done this week. Talk to me. My wife. We have one of those automated robot sweeping machines. We call him Mister Robot. And my wife, uh, my wife bought him googly eyes, so I put some googly eyes on my new favorite uh, focal DVRs. Here's the here's the trick part. Oops. Well, they were Velcroed on, and that way uh. I, can <laughs> <laughs> I can put anything I want on here: googly eyes, phantom eyes, three D printed eyes. Check this out. Uh, I don't have it. I'm sorry. I had to finish my review. I have created a fan shroud for Fat Shark goggles, and on the top is the logo for the FPV Terry. Cool. So soon that'll be available for download at thingverse.com. Your source for things. That's cool. In the verse. Yeah. yeah. So I got a Terry thing. And then I also made, Mac Dunn gave me okay. uh, in trade for an airplane, I believe, the Fox Seer Legend 1. I found a series of mounts for this, and I put the RC Group's logo on that as well. They're all done. I just uh, have yet to get, I moved everything back in here. So I'll be printing them. Maybe next week we'll take a look at the RC Group's branded fun. plastic. Fun, fun, nice. Fun. The only thing I printed recently is this little beauty right here. Is that a doorstop? No, it looks like <laughs> it's, it's a, a door wedge. Height. It's just a little ride height uh, thing for one of my um, RC cars. Oh, cool. So I can get it at, at the for the class. It's uh, vintage Trans Am racing. I'm going to start doing that here, kind of locally. And one one of the requirements is a five millimeter ride height uh, maximum, or yes, minimum. 
So uh, gonna do that one right there. Make sure it's good. I love three D printing. It's just awesome. I don't have anything else cool to show you guys, but um, hopefully I will soon. It's getting to be about that time of the year where we start winding down on acquiring new things for a little bit, huh? Well, I have to say, I, uh, I'm going to talk about it here. You can't see it. I have uh, one more airplane to get in the air and fly and review, and I'm starting to get a little concerned about the temps. Although, is, that a, is that a rifle cleaning uh, <laughs> thing in the back I see on the couch there? So when I, I – you can't see it, but to my left here, I've created a 3D printing dedicated work area. It's right here within iShot. It's got its own camera. I'm going to take pictures when I feel like it's done. But I think I have that same pole. I had to clean out my area, <laughs> and it involved a lot of gun cleaning supplies. And so now it's with the samurai sword. But yeah. And it reminded me that I did not clean my pistols the last time I went and shot, so I need to get in there ASAP. Matt Gunn left. wonder where he's going. Bye, Matt. Oh, uh, you're putting a hat on. I'm back. I, I felt a little uh, alone, even though Jim's dressed up like a stereotype. You know what? <laughs> I'm, I might start wearing this hat. Yeah, it looks it's a five-gallon bucket. Hells yeah. All right. Um, now, I, I got a thing to talk about. I got a little – my. you got something, Matt? You want me to move on to my deal here? Go for it. All right. Let me size this page down. So, I, behind me – this is tricky. I, behind me, have – uh, my 1.3 gear that we fully discussed in one of our podcasts, Fat Shark hooked me up, and I'm about to apply it. First, I have to put it on something, and then I have to fly it and shoot video and then discuss my feelings. That's how my reviews operate. But I uh, I started a Theory Top W post a long time ago, and it popped up with uh, people talking about Theory Type Ws, and I thought, hey, I'm going to tell them that I'm going to maybe put a 1.3 on a Theory Type W. And the first reply I got from Mr. Casey 69 was, oh, I'm sorry, that's not it. Uh, the first reply I got from Tom C was, most FPV race events in my neck of the woods require 5.8 because 1.3 can affect some 2.4 users. Most 1.3 gigahertz use UHF. Sorry, but I do not see the point of a 1.3 gig on a small racing wing. Okay. Well, okay. Well, wait, wait, wait. Let me, I've got two more replies and then we'll discuss. And so what I told the guys is I want y'all's opinion. So I said, I'm never going to race my theory. I think it's a great all around FPV winged aircraft. I'm looking for good penetration through t trees and brush and a better signal. We will see. I'll have a fun or a full feature when I'm done. Still not sure if the theory W is the way I'm going to go. And then this guy writes, uh, Tom C says again, I suggest you select a bigger plane to try your 1.3 system with, hopefully with GPS return to home. Using 1.3 gig on small racing wing with limited endurance makes about as much sense as using 1.3 on a 250 FPV racing drone, in my honest opinion. Sorry, I do not mean to be overly negative, but some FPV things do not make sense to me. If you want not very informed. If you want better 5.8 performance, you may be better off trying a different antenna, in my honest opinion. Even with our local 25 milliwatt VTX competition restrictions, I get very good 5.8 performance on my 250 racing drones. And there's more using Am Amaway Omnis um, and my Fat Shark goggles. See, he's got his racing blinders on. That's yeah. 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 Like, so this I, I, is 1.3. See, and it works perfectly. Yeah. And guess what? There's no notch filter on this. And it works perfectly still somehow. What? Oh, you know what? I have my notch filter. I should go get it. So you we should can get your it. notch filter. So the guys are saying, and I should find this, that um, if you're running 2.4 with a 1.3, you buy a notch filter from ReadyMade RC, our go-to FPV joint, and that allows no interference between the two, correct? Correct. And so yeah, then... Yeah. the the it's next a part notch signal, notch filter. So then I got these guys. Hopefully they stay on their antennas. So I've got this unit uh, from Fat Shark. This is the latest 1.3 generation, and what that's going to do is plug into my goggles right here, and it'll turn these 5.8s directly into 1.3s. And then wait, is that right? What the heck? 
Hmm. What's wrong? It looks like I got. Uh oh, I got a problem. Ooh. I got. I got. Did you get two modules and no transmitter. That's right. I got no transmitter. I just pulled these out of the box. They came the other day. I got two modules. Those are two modules. <laughs> they sent you two modules, huh? Hmm. Hmm. It happens. Okay. Well, it's easy to get a transmitter. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, Amazon. I'll have it tomorrow. So then the other side of this is a one point three transmitter that I was wanting to show the size of it so that we could talk about how big it was. And then um, for antenna, I have these two true RCs, which Matt, I would assume this would live on the airplane, and mm -hmm. it would just it could embed in the foam, it could sit on top of the wing, it doesn't care, right? Right. It doesn't care. It sees right through that foam. And then this will go on my goggles, and I'll be looking like I'm uh, flying with a can of snuff. Very cool. Yep. So, so I guess what that young man's or that guy's uh, beef was is that he didn't understand. He was basically saying you can't use it when you race, so why would you put it on a race wing? Well, there's so many people out there that don't race right. that have race wings. The majority of people out there are just flying for fun, having a good time, and uh, enjoying a wing that's capable of racing, but just flying it around the field. They've got good distance. You can get out easy past a mile. And the good thing about the 1.2 is that it's a longer wavelength. It is much more solid. It does not have as much multi-pathing issues as 5.8. And if you do find yourself on the backside of some tree leaves, if you're flying around, if you get down low, go around a tree trunk, uh, you're much more uh, apt to keeping your signal than 5.8. Now, there are exceptions to the rules for everything, but the general consensus is that you're going to get more distance. You're going to have a better signal with less multipathing from 1.2 than you are 5.8. So um, I think ultimately it's going to live on the theory because it is just such a sweetheart, easy to throw by, you know, in, by yourself or whatever. And But... For the review, check this out, Matt. I ran this by Jason last night. I was laying myself to sleep. I was laying in bed, and it, <laughs> uh, it popped up in my head. Hey, I got an idea. So this already has 5.8. Since uh, Nashboro, I moved it to the nose. I'm, I put this uh, wood piece up here to get the weight closer to the nose. But I, what I was thinking, Matt, was that I put 5.8 and uh, 1.3 on the same plane, and then I record DVR from both, and I could do a split screen and show what it looks like. That would be an, a pretty good assessment to show how the two perform in on the same plane at the same time. Absolutely. Now, let me, where would you, do you, Jason said it probably wouldn't matter where I put my 1.3 uh, video transmitter, but you think I could get away with just putting it back here? I thought maybe I'd elevate the cam a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Both of them are going to mess with each other a little bit. I mean, even if they aren't harmonics uh, or they aren't going to, uh, uh, directly step on each other, it's still two signals screaming in the same room, so to speak. So yes, it's it's not ideal. The ideal place would be stick them out on the wings, but close like that, you're still going to get the feeling. It's still going to work and show the difference in the two. Now make sure both of them are the same milliwatts if you want to give a real accurate flight. Right, uh, right, right. Engine. You know, and so then, usually your 1.2 is going to be in the four to 600 milliwatt range, while your 5.8 can be anywhere from 25 to 600. Yeah, that's 200 on here, I believe. So if you had a 200 milliwatt uh, VTX mm. with your uh, 1.2, which I doubt you will get one, um, that might be the ideal way to go. That's what I run is I think it's two or 250 is all yeah, I run. That Shark 1.2? Uh, no, I run some generic. Um, I could send you a link here, Jim, of the ones well, I use. Well, I'm, I'm going to be running Fat Sharks because every I'm um, Fat Shark pure at this moment. My goggles and everything in my planes, everything is Fat Shark, so I'm going to stay Fat Shark. Uh, Matt, what if I moved it back so it was sit, the uh, transmitter was sitting farther back here? You think that'd be far enough back to stay out of its... Now, that's where I had mine. On a, I cut out a little deck on top, just uh -huh. used a uh, one of those snap uh, razor blades and then slid it along there and made it flat right on top and then right. popped it right on there with some of my clear 3M5 tape. And that, that's perfect. Yeah, you're getting good separation. And then yeah. when you run that little antenna, you can put that even farther out on the wing. Yeah, I can move it out on the wing, right? Yeah, I think you'll be fine. It'll, it'll definitely 
be a fun ride to show both side by side and, and when one breaks up over the other. You know? Well, the exciting part is, is I'll be able to use the goggles I love for 1.3 and it has a built-in DVR, so I'll be able to use that. And then I'm going to get another monitor out there for 5.8 and then that's how I'm going to record that one. Yeah, so the ones the ones I use are 200 milliwatt, 3499, nice and really small. Um, it's about the same size as a, a normal 5.8. Or, so that would work. They, I love them; they work really well. So if you really wanted to do it without having a bunch of strange issues, I would uh, somehow separate. Like, don't put one of them on your head and then one of them on a stand. The receivers, right? I would separate the receivers equidistant apart on a on tripods or some sort of stakes or something off the ground mm -hmm. just so they're both so the playing field is leveled because mm -hmm. you know? you, your head is a ground plane so to speak and and although it doesn't really matter much with these um, circular polarized antennas it still doesn't hurt to set them up so that there's they're they're equal you know what i'm saying well, what I'm going to do is when I do the initial review, it's going to have those uh, stock antennas on it from Fat Shark, and then when I do the True RC, that'll be a totally separate review about the install and hmm. uh, operation and all that stuff, just to keep it separated. You Should be a fun project. I did a test um, back in the day, not too long ago, and I, I didn't really do it on. It was sort of my own personal test to see the difference between. Uh, different brands of 5.8 and what I did was I flew offshore Lake Erie and just flew out a couple of miles Eight and then miles. Came back. not afraid to say it um, but it was very interesting I, I, I took uh, a um, a dragon RC uh, oh my God, it's called a drac it's buddy RC sells them and it's a even it's not the drac airplane by Chris click it's a drac adjustable power level 5.8 transmitter and then I took a ready-made RC transmitter and then I took a fat shark transmitter and I flew them I flew straight out came straight I flew as far out as then as I could see uh, when the signal started breaking up then I came straight back put a new battery pack in switched out the VTX flew it out again came back switched out the VTX flew all three of them the best performing out of the three was um, the uh, was the drac on 600 milliwatts? I did almost three and a half miles out, and then the others were just behind it. So that was a fun little test too. You know, it wasn't all three of them on the plane at the same time. Right, right. But it was yeah. uh, one at a time, out back, out back. I tried to replicate the conditions exactly, and I would say they were pretty close. So now I did something similar to this a couple years ago at the. Um Flying Circus. No, it was actually, yeah, it was at the Flying Circus event where I had the full-size Connex. This was before the Pro Site. Uh, I put the full-size Connex and a 1.3 system on my uh, Ranger, the Volantech RC Ranger. Yeah, yeah. And then, so, and then I had uh, two monitors on a tripod hanging off each other. And then so I could sit there and people were behind me and everybody was watching. But we flew HD, FPV, and then 1.3 as a backup, so, you know, Side by side, split tested. It was a lot of fun to be able to, to have that dual, dual look to it. That's five eight and one point two. That's good, right? Uh, I was one point three and five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Connex is five. Who, who won? Who won? Uh, who won? Well, I mean, the uh, the one three was obviously less laggy and more clear as far as signal quality. Um, the digital. Uh, Connect had some digital artifacts every now and then, but it was, you know, it's HD. It was a much better looking picture and image to fly from. And then you could get out, you know, far enough out where that would just go away because the range was limited to like a thousand meters. Um, that was a hard limit uh, electronically, I believe. I think they had a electronic limit on it for at a thousand meters. They would they to turn around, come back, or it would shut off, and then it eventually did. But the one three, you know good for miles so but it was really cool to, to see that dual test so it's totally possible i think you'll get some good footage to put in your review so that's going to be fun yep yep so uh jason you're headed to the dlg thing have you built anything lately no 
I am uh, just looking forward. I luckily I didn't crash anything at the bruise or break anything, and so uh, everything's ready to go. Uh, and when I get back, I plan to hit the review hard up on that uh, <laughs> the Easy Glider Four. I'm all about cell planes, man. Joey Crane says now he's uh, relieved that he's not the only one who thinks about airplanes before he goes to bed. <laughs> it's true. I, I do. I'll lay down and I'll think, what do I got to do tomorrow? And I'll lay it all out. And then occasionally an idea will pop up. So it's a good time, I think. And then, okay, well, let's talk about this. Uh, Real Thought 8, have you guys had time to mess around with it since our last discussion? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I fly it every day just for a few sessions, a quick session. Makes me feel like I'm standing at the field with my Oculus Rifts on. So I had a situation, I guess I'll say it here. I uh, This is a very early stage of RF8. They actually have an update, and I haven't tried it on it yet. But I ran out and got the Oculus Rifts. I've been wanting them and fighting myself on it. And I just said to my wife, I'm going to buy Oculus Rifts. And she goes, you go, honey. So That's a great thing to say from your significant other. <laughs> How can you not? And I had a little money in PayPal. I had a little airplane money. Uh, you know how it is. You keep that little side cash. And so I went down and bought it from Best Buy. Same price as buying it from Amazon. I figured I can have it now. Anyway, I got the real flight eight. I got in there. I got in an easy star. And I'm when people fly with me in real life, I will try to make you sick because it, I've never been sick in the goggles. I don't understand what that means. I always think it's kind of foo-foo or it's not that bad. And Well, I... I'm not sure exactly what I was doing. I do know that I was uh, highly rolling, going over a tree, coming under a thing. I'm inverted. I roll back over. And the second I rolled back over, I felt my head flip. Yeah. And I went from normal to sweating and sick. Yeah, man. It's, it hits you right about here in your stomach. Oh, it happens to me all the time. I can't feel it now in my head, but for a week after, I actually had Oculus uh, revulsion. I was like, I don't know if I can put those on, but. Um, I, I'm writing a story called VR sickness and how to s know that it's coming and stop before you get there. I was sick for a whole, at least until that night, which I thought when you got sick like that, it just went away. It doesn't just go, like you take the goggles off and you're not sick. Situations. I, I am experiencing this too. Same as you. I've never in my entire life been motion sick ever fly full scale planes do all sorts of crazy stuff, never been motion sick until I put those VR goggles on and played ultra wings. So I'm flying along and I'm every, every time you move that stick and your body and you're immersed in the scene and the horizon level changes and you're dipping and I get this sort of what I like to call the McFeely in your stomach. Right. But, but your inner ear is you're completely level. So your brain is giving you, your eyes are giving you, conflicting signals with what your uh, your body's feeling and that's what causes the motion sickness and it's the other way around too if you're inside a moving ship or something like that and the ship's rocking back and forth and your inner ear your body's moving but your eyes are, are seeing normal stuff right. that's when you're supposed to go to the top deck and actually look outside it, it's the opposite way with this you got to take the goggles off and get back into reality I got sick that first time I was sick for 24 hours. I had this pit in my stomach. Yeah, exactly. What is wrong with me? And I went, oh, my God, I'm motion sick. And it happens when I play, of all things now, Google Earth VR. Flying around in Google Earth VR, I, it gives me about 10 minutes before I'm I sick. I got to take it off. I go, oh, my God. I'm like, I got to stop doing this. But well, it's I, so have, I have my article written. Uh, it's not done. I'm still looking for more ways and things, but one of the first symptoms is you're sweating. And I did break out in a sweat. I did it to myself twice in one day. I just didn't believe it. And like you, I'm pretty sure I was sick for a whole 24 hours. But what I'm going to do is the DVRs have uh, HDMI in. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to HDMI out of my machine in, and I'm going to try to FPV through the goggles and not the Oculus. The Oculus is 3D and we don't 3D FPV. No one does. Yeah, the pan and tilt is just 180 degrees, and it's very crunchy. You know, it, like it's not fluid. So, so this would the the VR experience if you're flying FPV in real flight eight is like what Jason was saying, like and what you're saying, Jim. It's very unnatural. It's like you're in a miniature airplane flying in real life. They fixed that though with this update, right, Jason? No, well, no. Really so there's a couple things. So it's this. 
You read what? I okay. I went and did the update to the RF8, the patch, and I actually screenshot the updates for that patch. I've got an email sitting here if you want to, me to read it. But that was one thing that they said they altered was uh, what it looked like when you were in a plane or standing on the ground to make it more realistic. Okay, cool. Well, so a couple of things. I'll talk about my experience here. I did do FPV from the Oculus goggles just to see what it would like. But it was like an a quad looking straight out the nose, and I was doing a race course. And I was able to fly much more accurately than I ever have on 2D in the simulator. It, something about it didn't make me sick. I was doing like fast rolls and loops and flips and flying around and bouncing all through the course. And something about it, it was like, I was like, this is the future of FPV, like having this ability. And it's kind of like harkens back to what I talked about with having a 360 degree camera that somehow digitally translated to head tracking. And so while it's a fixed position camera, it's got a 360 degree view, obviously, and you can move your head within the camera environment. So you're not seeing all of it at once. You're just seeing where you're, you're looking, but you can look around almost like, painting within the digital camera view. Um, but me flying in that position, I was, I just felt like I was much more present than traditional FPV flying. So I was there and I was zooming around and I was just like controlling myself to fly through the gate. It was so much better. So that was really exciting. I'm going to try this now. Now you got me. And then the other thing. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I was surprised. And you, you know, you look around and stuff, but it was more like you needed to look kind of hold your orientation where forward was to fly properly. But the other thing that I did that I absolutely loved, I, at first, the first time I tried it on before the patch, the scaling was all off for the VR. Like the, I felt like a giant in this field. It just it didn't feel like the right size, and the airplane was huge. When you fly it next to you, it's like a full-scale, like, giant airplane. It's just not very realistic. But a uh, the Russian Thunder... And I was playing through the scenario, just checking them all out, and I stumbled across it, and it said full-scale Russian Thunder. And I was like, ooh, this is interesting. So I popped in that, and it sits you in the cockpit, and it's like the full-scale Russian Thunder. You're actually, it feels like it's the right size. You're sitting in there. The spacing is correct. It's got the sticks that move when you move the control sticks. The cockpit looks great. You look out the wing. It's got amazing detail the rivets and panel lines and all this crazy stuff on the ailerons and they move and all that stuff and the sounds. And then you take off and fly and it felt really, <coughs> really natural. So that's probably my favorite thing now uh, to do an RF-8 is get in the goggles and fly Russian Thunder because it feels like I'm flying the real thing. So that's really fun. And when you say the goggles. And then they fixed. You mean the Oculus goggles? <clears throat> with the Rift, yeah. With the Rift. So when you put on the fat sharks and fly it, it's going to be just like you're looking at a TV screen. You know, it's it's two dimensional. It's nothing. You know, it's going to be that just on your face. Um, so that should help you with your FPV view for the airplanes where you're in a small cockpit. But you'll see if they've updated that. Yeah, that difference. But get rid of them. man, flying the drones in FPV in the Rift is something special it surprised me how good it was. So, well, damn, you should know you're the best race pilot that we have at this point. So you, you'll know better than us. Heck yeah. What, what about you, Matt? Um, I, I just, for me trying the fat sharks through the HDMI, I, I'm trying to recreate my experience out in the grass. And so I'm curious to see how that looks. The, and my, you ocula yep. My take on it is, uh, I'm extremely happy. Like the second I heard that they're allowing that they're setting up roof lighting for VR, I'm like, bam, I've got the Oculus. I'm going to give it a run. When the second I put them on and, and stood there on the field, I was like, this is it. It's correct. It feels like I'm literally flying a model airplane on a field. Yes. Because you can I was gonna say because you can stand there and look over at your airplane. Yeah, that's you can that's watch really it fly by. Part of it. Now, it is correct what Jason says. The scaling is off when I'm standing at one of the photo fields and the uh, pilot box is when I look down at it and it's like right here under my chin. Yeah, it's all scaled wrong. And then when I'm hovering the um, uh, Russian, the, the Yak, 
and bring it in close and it's like boom even though it's a hundred and ten inch wingspan it looks like a, a, a half scale model when you get really close to yourself so that's off but but, but did you do the update absolutely yeah I did the update oh, and it, okay. it was no different the scaling seemed exactly the, the same on photo fields it was literally the same so maybe, maybe it's just the photo fields were that the issue I because I, I didn't test that I've, I flew it in a non-photo field and it felt fine, but yeah. then maybe then I didn't fly it back in a photo field to see the difference. So Actually, I think they said maybe that's where it is. You don't fly the Oculus in a photo field. I, I immediately went to a 3D what? field and never even went into a photo yeah, field. Yeah, the photo fields are amazing. It, it, it's actually a real field. It feels like you're standing on a field, and, and that was good. What I didn't like is that when I'm doing a, a really wide circuit with the airplane, say I take off and I sort of go out and make the turn, well, the resolution on the Oculus Rift aren't the greatest. So the when you get far sure. away, your airplane doesn't, it isn't an airplane anymore. It's like three moving pixel lines. And it's just this blob that you can't tell which way you're going. So having experience as an RC pilot, I know, yeah, my plane's traveling this way. But if you were to start rolling really fast and then all of a sudden stop, you don't know if you're up or down. And that's if your plane's really far away. So bringing it back in closer. If you're doing close circuits, it works exceptionally well. If you are hovering or doing close in aerobatics, I love it. But the second you get far away, especially with a small plane, you're not going to be able to tell what it is. And that's the shortcomings. It's kind of realistic. Jason, you remember after I got my eyes done and I didn't have glasses yet and we were out flying and I was like, please take the controller. I can't tell orientation anymore. Yeah. It's real life. Uh, I am a little blown away at the low res Oculus. Um, I, you know, it's 2017, y'all. I think, based on Fat Shark and other things, we can have much Wait, better. Quick question, Jason. Have we tried to run it using the the scaled up version of that? Um, what's it called? To increase the pixel density. Oh no, I haven't tried that. I need to try that. It's in the I've... Oculus Dev. I'm gonna try that and see if it's any better. Um, tell you what, you guys talk i'll run it right now and see how about that well there you go so what he's talking about i think is there's a config section for the oculus and you can increase it doesn't make the image better it it upsizes the image and then it scales it back down yeah. and it so it's it's everything out. display override what do we usually do 1.5 jason super sampling 1.5 to 2 but I with your card I, probably 1.5 let's try 1.5 all right so yeah. i did it to 1.5 and i, I just leave that open right yeah then right. you open uh, Oculus Home and you can start real flight. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got. All right, while Matt's doing that, Jason, look what I found. It looks like a visitor badge. Where's it from? I can get into Horizon Hobby anytime I don't. Oh, man. Heck yeah. What is with all the cussing? And I start, <laughs> yeah, I start, that. Sorry, Kev. I've got this if I need it, though. I'll put it on my camera back. Hey, everyone, let's look at Matt Gunn. He looks pretty cool. <laughs> All right, let's let's fire up some uh, some real flight here. Hold on. Wait, is what? Those are Oculus. Yeah, you're seeing the the cameras picking up the IR sensors, so that's what oh. the the Oculus sensors are looking at to track. Wait, you're seeing something that I yeah, yeah, we can see all the IR sensors on the front that I don't yeah, see. Yeah, if you if you turn your goggles on and like hold your phone camera up to it, you'll see all the uh, IR emitters. Really. Yeah, that, that must be all the dents and the vibe. You know, they have the indentations. That's oh, that's doing. cool. It really does that. Yeah. Yeah, unless you have an IR filter on your camera, it'll show them. Oh, I see. There's IR. Okay, that's actually coming out of there. Okay, let me. Uh, let's see here. You know, I never not see this and don't think of the scene from Weird Science where those guys are uh, trying to pick up girls in the gym and they've got one of my favorite movies, man, of all time. <laughs> and and uh, we are the ultimate geeks. We've gone straight back to two hooligans. All right. There's a lot of calculating going on back here, folks. There it is. Mac here we go. Macon has a heavy duty machine over there too. Wow, that looks pretty dang amazing so far. Here we go. Uh, I have done this. This is kind of a side trick to make your Oculus look better. Holy and, moly. Uh, it works for me. All right. Let's, I, can, let's... I can see it in a video. So the problem is, what do I do? Okay, here we are. Fine. Wow, wow. They have a new, they have a new screen now. It's actually in the 
Yeah, you can use the transmitter. I was like, man, this stinks because I had to take the goggles off to right, make the right, change right. the airplanes or whatever. Now you can do it all in the headset. Kudos Just to the, the transmitter. Real flight team for that. Yep. And once again, this is not on the street, so the previous issues we were having don't even exist for the people that are going to buy it. All right, it looks pretty good. I'm getting actually, Jason, a little bit of uh, lag because I'm running at a 1.5. Uh huh. Ah. So it's like almost the plane is uh, is chugging, if you will. Not by much. Not much yeah. at all. Yeah. Let me just fly away. That's the problem I'm having is when I get far away. It's a little better, not much. Not enough. Yeah, it can, only, it can only go so far. All right, I'm heading. I'm heading out into the distance. Yeah, it's better, but it's not the best. I'm gonna fly right at myself. Ready? I'm gonna. I'm gonna hit myself. Oh now, man! I do have on my ah. machine. Woo! On my machine, I do have the graphics to max. Everything set to max. Yeah, me too. Um, and it looks fantastic on a 2D monitor in 1080 or. Talking about the uh, graphics in real flight? In real flight, yeah. Does that affect the graphics in your Oculus? I don't know how they I don't know how they did that. It may be it's probably locked to the resolution of the headset. Yeah, I got mine maxed out too in the uh um, in the But as far as the graphic quality, I don't know if that's I don't know if those settings translate over to the Rift or not. I'm not sure. Right, right, right. Well, well it works. Know. Super sampling um it worked a little bit, but it wasn't like – it actually made my computer start to I, – okay, I have a – what do I have? I have a GeForce GTX 1070 SC supercharged by EVGA. So um, it can take a little bit of extra pushing, but it's definitely not right up there where the 1080 is. So, And I've got the 1080, so uh, I will. Uh, my goal later today is just to fly real flight. We're putting out a review, by the way. We should mention this. Yeah. Uh, J Jason, Matt, myself, Nikolai, and Joe, mean Joe, yeah. all got a copy to play with. And uh, we've done reviews on Real Flight for years. And I thought this time what we'd do is get an interpretation from each person about what they liked or what they uh, played with the most. So I know Jay, or, uh, Joe was in the game challenges. And I what I want to do, guys, is get the uh, uh, Real Flight online portion is back in eight and so uh if you guys jump on i would love for you to join in a session and i get i'm sure it'll be just like 7.5 i'm just excited it's back and was really sad that it was gone from from x or 10. yeah that really upset a lot of people it's kind of I, I have this thing especially in live video games if i'm not playing live people i really don't care so for some reason it translates to real flight unless you're learning or teaching yourself how to fly or something then, then it wouldn't matter yeah, War Thunder, Battlegrounds, you name it. <clears throat> we still haven't gotten Jason in Battlegrounds yet. Yeah, Jason, uh, Jim's on board now. I got oh, him. Oh, is he on it? Yeah, he's, got, been, he's been doing really well playing in Battlegrounds. I got in the uh -huh. top ten, top ten last night. Out of the hundred people join, and then it's you win if you're the last person alive. Yeah. So anybody watching, uh, if you play Battlegrounds, let us know in the in the comment section. It's. Uh, I'm, I'm Billy Hell on there. Yeah, you see me I'll, running around. I'll peel your wig back. <laughs> I did just buy a new game that comes out tomorrow. I'm going to be playing at night this weekend while I'm at the event. But uh, Mario Odyssey from for the Nintendo Switch. I'm going to be playing that a lot. You're going to be playing shivering your, you know, what's off inside of your hammock. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. have a Switch. Is that pretty cool? It's good for that for the Nintendo stuff. Yeah. Truman has it. He he said that's all he's taken to Mexico this year. Usually he takes three gaming systems, and uh, it's a it's a border nightmare. Ha, yeah, I bet. <laughs> Matt, 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 I can't find you as peel your wig back. I've looked a couple of times. I'll get it. I'll, I'll we'll we'll uh we'll hook up here shortly. We got to play some two on two games. I think now that you understand how to play the game, then yeah. we would probably do pretty well. Yep, yep. So. Um, and especially if we had two people in a buggy. Yeah, hang hang tight for a second. I'm gonna go get you this charger. I want to show you guys that I'm been doing. A review. Yeah, well, I was gonna say this is not onlinegaming.com. Uh, this is our secret. <laughs> uh, but we do have varied interest here. I've got to say I have been 3D printing nonstop since last week. My review is live on rcgroups.com, so go check it out. I do a whole video that shows what's in the box, how you put it together. I flatten the bed and then uh, I print a part. And while attempting to do that, I have a problem and walk you through fixing the problem and then successfully 
print something. So I feel pretty good about it. And the CR-10 is such an awesome printer. And uh, I also want to say uh, big kudos to GearBest. I'm going to do this by memory out. I, uh, they have become the main sponsors of the micro multirotor and the mini multirotor sections and our multirotor section on rcgroups.com. So um, GearBest is out there doing it, man. They're, they're like a top tier uh, supporter now of the site. It's pretty amazing. That's cool. It is cool. Did I, did I, were you in on that conversation this morning, Jason? Um, apparently not. I'd say they're, let's just say they're a top tier advertiser. There you go. Gear best. Did All you right. change shirts, Matt? Did you put on a different shirt? No, same shirt, man. All right. So I got the, uh, you guys saw I did that ISDT, the smallest charger they have. I did a review on it and I don't remember what the name of it is. Uh, this one's the T8 ISDT. Yeah. So I finally picked this one up and I wanted to show you guys a, a beef with it right off the bat. Uh oh. It's got this beautiful uh, yeah, glass screen to it, right? Look at that. Look at that. There I am, right in the middle there. Hi, everybody. Infinite screen. Well, the problem is, is that one touch of it, it smears. It's just like uh, the cover on your iPhone. Uh, dashboard on your car on the gauges you know you, you wipe all the dust and you get those lines in it so they give you this it's one it's a phone protector right and it's got the two sides on it that say peel off this side first put it on peel off the second side i'm going to be honest it, it came with no instructions with regards to the peel off piece except for the little tabs and it said and, and having done this with a phone in the past you got to use your duster here Yep. You got to use uh, a cleaner. Put some uh, glass glasses. cleaner on it. Yeah. Yep. Did not work at all. I cleaned the heck out of this thing to where you could not see anything. Put this on, and it had more bubbles in it than a piece of bubble wrap. Did you put was, uh, some, some uh, glass cleaner under it? Yes. I, I did everything. It would not, it was microscopic levels. Screwed this up. So bail it. Bye bye. <laughs> running it without it. And you know what? It'll have smear. Oh, no. <laughs> so uh quick plug in let's see 12 to 40 volts input 12 to 40 volts input is nice you know what this is a 7.4 volt pack so that's not going to work oh well, i've got one you want me to get uh, it yeah let me see if it'll work ready look at that voltage check failed there so you that's go. perfect let me see if i got i think i got a pack right here i've got one matt i can get it for you real quick i don't need yours jason <laughs> Okay, here we are. Ready? There we are. So you can't. It's going to be difficult, almost impossible for you for for you guys to see the angle. We can see it on the angle, not straight on, but it angled uh, more angle. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> it's difficult. How about like that? Uh, it's hard. Yeah, yeah sure. Anyway, you get the idea, but it's very easy to use. The pack's almost as big as the charger. I know. So the cool thing is, is that I have a um, perform. Oh, I was going to charge without a lipo. So yeah, it says no. So, oh, excuse me, charge without a balancer. Um, nice little unit, very lightweight. I could see in my. Uh, I mean, the whole point of these things, right? And and you guys tell me if you agree or not. But I agree. The point of these things is for it to be um, small and able to fit in. A K, uh, like your backpack or something. Le I would leave this in my truck because I'm always going places and I need to charge stuff. So then you say, okay, if you make a case for it, um, it now gets bigger and bigger and you're defeating the purpose of having a small charger. I think a case like this little Venom battery pack charger that I've got uh, thing would be perfect for this. Now, you could put your own little piece of foam in there. You could have it you know, mount it in there, or you could just keep it in there like so and take it with you if you want it, or you can just throw this thing in a box and uh, take it. That's the point of it is to be small and lightweight. Right. Maybe it's overkill. I just, I like cases. So I see some feet there from Jimmy. I like hey, turtles. I like turtles. Yeah. Hey, next oh, that, week. We're not gonna... about the I like turtles guy. We're going to get the whole crew on and we're going to talk about Real Flight 8. Hopefully, our review will be done and we can reference that in the live feed. So, hopefully, Joe and Nick can come on and we're going to just talk about all that good stuff. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it is becoming winter. We are going to, this is the, when we kind of stopped doing the podcast every week last year. Um, so you can look forward to that. Jason will be back from his event. He can discuss that. Matt Gunn's growing a beard between now and then. So uh, we can check that out and see the progress. Someone told me that it needs to just, I just to grow it out. And I, um, so. I agree. So I think we're at the end of the podcast. So uh, for the people that, that weren't on at the first, I'm going to, I'm going to take us out of here with my bull. You get it all pulled up. All right, go for it, Jimmy. Uh, uh Oh, he's, he's tying up. So, so if you watch the show about uh, us going looking at costumes on uh, Amazon, this is uh, the one I, I said I liked and I got it. So. Is that what bull riders do? Do they go, woo, woo, woo? No, no. It's one hand in the well. You got to keep one hand in the air. You cannot touch the bull at any time. And what you don't want is this going into your skull because then you become a stupid bull rider. Woo! Woo! Our secret is going nuts. <laughs> the world's largest. In the- woo, Nelly! Nelly's my dog. That's appropriate. All right, everybody. Have a great Halloween. Be safe out there. Come here, Nell. Come here, Nell. Come up here. Nell says, Happy Halloween. And uh, thank y'all for viewing and hanging out with us. Give me a kiss. Where are my kisses? There you go. All right, y'all. Sit me down now. <laughs> oh. oh. That is the most disturbing Halloween head. <laughs> In three, two, one. <laughs>